Now, let's move on to talk about decimal expansion. Let x be a real number. We can obtain the decimal expansion of x using the following steps. Take a0 to be the integer part of x, and f0 to be the fractional part of x. Then, 10 times f0 is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 10. Next, we take a1 to be the integer part of 10 times f0, and f1 to be the fractional part of 10 times f0. Observe that a1 is an integer between 0 to 9 inclusive, and again, 10 times f1 is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 10. We continue to take a2 to be the integer part of 10 times f1, and f2 to be the fractional part of 10 times f1. Continuing like this, we obtain the decimal expansion of x as a0, point, a1, a2, a3, and so on. In general, for a real number x, we can write x as a0, point, a1, a2, a3, and so on, where a i are integers between 0 to 9 inclusive, with the possible exception of a0. Here, a0 is the integer part of x, f0 is the fractional part of x, a k is the integer part of 10 times f k minus 1, and f k is the fractional part of 10 times f k minus 1. This is true for each positive integer k. We now prove a theorem which characterizes rational numbers in terms of their decimal expansions. It states that a real number x is rational if and only if the decimal expansion of x is eventually periodic. That is, x is of the form a0, point a1, a2, a3, all the way to an, b1, b2, all the way to bk, where b1 to bk are the repeated digits. Let's try to prove the left implication first, which is easier. We write x as the form x equals a0, point a1, a2, a3, all the way to a n, plus 1 over 10 to the nth power, times 0, point, b1, b2, up to bk, where b1 up to bk are repeated digits. Note that this is equivalent to the given form, because a shift in the decimal point corresponds to a factor of 10. In particular, the digits b1 to bk are shifted n digits towards the decimal point, so we multiply the number by 1 over 10 to the power n. Since a0, point a1, a2, a3, up to a n, and 1 over 10 to the nth power, are rational, to show that x is a rational number, it suffices to show that the number inside the bracket, which we call y, is rational. Now, we can write y as b1, b2, up to bk, times 1 over 10 to the k, plus 1 over 10 to the 2k, plus 1 over 10 to the 3k, and so on, because we know that the digits b1 to bk repeat themselves in every k digits. Now, the sum inside the bracket is a geometric sequence with common ratio 1 over 10 to the k, so we can write y as b1, b2, up to bk, over 10 to the k, times 1 over 1 minus 1 over 10 to the k, which is equal to b1 to bk over 10 to the k minus 1, and this is rational. Conversely, suppose that x is rational. We can write x as a over b, where a and b are integers. We can take b to be at least 1 by absorbing the negative sign in a if necessary. Now, take a0 to be the integer part of a over b, and f0 to be the fractional part of a over b. Then, a over b is equal to a0 plus f0, or a equals a0 times b plus r0, where r0 is equal 
to b times f0. Continue to take a1 as the integer part of 10 times f0, and f1 to be the fractional part of 10 times f0. Then, 10 times r0 is equal to b times 10 times f0, which equals b times a1 plus f1, which equals a1 times b plus r1, where r1 is b times f1. Inductively, we can define ak to be the integer part of 10 times fk minus 1, and fk to be the fractional part of 10 times fk minus 1, for all positive integers k. Then, we have 10 times rk minus 1 equals ak times b plus rk, where rk is equal to b times fk. Note that 10 times fk is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 10, which means that ak is an integer between 0 to 9 inclusive. Also, since rk is greater than or equal to 0 and less than b for all k, the rk's cannot be all distinct, so two of them must be the same at some point. So there must exist integers m and n such that n is greater than m, and rn equals rm. We can take m and n to be the least integers with this property. From the above construction, we know that 10 times rm is equal to am plus 1 times b plus rm plus 1, and 10 times rn is equal to an plus 1 times b plus rn plus 1. Notice that in both equations, the dividends 10 times rm and the divisors b are the same. So, from the division algorithm, we know that the quotients and the remainders must be equal. That is, am plus 1 is equal to an plus 1, and rm plus 1 is equal to rn plus 1. Since the subsequent dividend is 10 times the preceding remainders, we can see that am plus i is equal to an plus i for all i equals 1, 2, and so on. This implies that x equals a0, point a1, a2, a3, up to an, and am plus 1 up to an, where am plus 1 up to an are repeated digits. So the decimal expansion of x is eventually periodic which completes the proof. Let's move on to talk about the uniqueness of decimal expansions. We know that decimal expansions are not unique because 0 0.9 repeated is equal to 0 0.9999 and so on, which equals 9 over 10 plus 9 over 10 squared plus 9 over 10 cubed and so on, which equals 9 over 10 times 1 over 1 minus 1 over 10, which equals 1. However, we shall see in the next proposition that this is the only kind of non-uniqueness. Formally, suppose a real number x has two different decimal expansions. Then they must be of the form x equals a0 point a1 a2 up to a n, and 9 repeated, and equals a0, point, a1, a2, all the way, up to a n plus 1, where a n is an integer between 0 to 8. To prove this, we let the two expansions be a0, point, a1, a2, up to a n minus 1, a n, a n plus 1, and so on, and a0, point, a1, a2 up to a n minus 1, b n, b n plus 1, and so on, where a n is strictly less than b n. Then, the first expansion is less than or equal to a0, point, a1, a2, up to a n minus 1, a n, 9999, nine, 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 and so on, since all the digits are at most 9. From the previous observation, 
we know that we have the same value if we add 1 to a n and replace all the repeating nines by zeros. Since a n is less than b n, a n plus 1 is less than or equal to b n, and so this number is less than or equal to the other expansion a0, point a1, a2, up to a n minus 1, b n, b n plus 1, and so on. This is just x. Since we start with x and end with x, all the inequalities must be equalities. And so the two expansions are equal.